Me, he loves me and he'll never do that to me. And maybe those people provoked him or something. So there's this saying Gaspedia or Logotola or Luma Lafita La Fodisha. My name is Buledi Moroa Sui, and I come from originally from Limpopo, Hampashele, Mashite. I grew up in the dusty, like a very dusty, uh, humble village, you know, where people, where there was actually no electricity at all. So people used to go like fetch water from the river and stuff. So that's the type of uh, humble beginnings I come from. in a family so mamaka le papaka ne ba nyetse re ba ba ifoka gae. So I was bana ba le ba ba o ba just in general. So I used to I think I started reading at 4 years old. I started reciting poetry and like my mom would take me to schools to do that. So I mean, my mom was very loving, warm and everything, but my dad was hardly home. And the other thing was that because um, there was also just a sense of ownership towards my mother. So that's the type of, you know, marriage I saw of a man owning a woman. After I matriculated in 2007, February, my mom passes away through an accident. So it was sudden. I had spoken to her, um, I think on the, Sunday and she passes on on the Tuesday. I think that was like the turning point of my life. <sighs> uh, I was in varsity, so my cousin comes and tells me, Corino, Mama, oh, this and this happened, so we have to go home. As a 17-year-old, um, it's, 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 it's a critical time, you know, for you. I just started varsity. So what happened was the void she left is, is what I then went into the world looking for. Then I had a friend, like, at home who knew this guy. Yeah, he's a civil engineer. Uh, he's doing his intern and he's, he's my cousin and he's nice. Ah, Mara, this guy likes girls. As we were talking, he actually passes and says hi. And then um, he was driving a golf, I think it's a golf one. And uh, then I was quite intrigued. I was like, oh, he looks cool. So then I told this friend of mine and I was like, no, you must give him my number. <laughs> so. <laughs> My friend gives him the number uh, and then where we used to live is about 45 minutes away from town, which is Polokwan. Then he said to me that we should meet for like lunch. I went to meet him. I was, I think I was very, I think it was just after my mom passed. So I was, I think I was in a fragile space. We started talking from then onwards. 2007, then I went to start studying at University, I mean, Val University of Technology, because I had decided I'm gonna do information technology. And this guy that I had just met was going to do his BTEC at TUT. But then, because I was going to VUT, he was like, ah, actually, let me come do it at VUT. We gradually started dating, basically. Very sweet guy, kind. Um, you take you out on dates and stuff. So the, the, the typical stuff, and the other thing is, remember as a first year, like my peers were dating other first years or second years, you know, you go to Wimpy and that's it. But here I was planning trips to Deben <laughs> at 18. So, so, you know, planning vacations. So, because he was working. So, so it started like that. It started with the phone. 
So that's how, I mean, he really got his way into my life. It was through gifting. And I suppose for me, this was familiar because that's how my dad shows love. Or something, or for something. So I think for me, that was just familiar. And I was like, okay, this is what men are supposed to do. He then talked about his exes. So I remember him telling me a story about his ex and he was like, yeah, I used to date this girl and I uh, can't remember what she did, but I like, I to this day. Someone is bragging about beating people up and here I am thinking it's okay. I think in my mind I was just like, no, he'll never do it to me. He loves me and he'll never do that to me. And maybe those people provoked him or something, so. The red flags, ne? Ditomile. So what he would do was, if I go to visit him, I said to check who called me the whole week, who texted me the whole week. I need to account, like literally, who is he or she, and how do you know her, and what were you guys talking about? Then you're like, okay, maybe this is how relationships are supposed to be. We were coming from somewhere and we were at a garage. So we were lost and we were asking for directions and it was me, him, and two of his friends. So two of his friends were like at the back and I was sitting on the front seat. He was on the driver's seat. And then we were having an argument about directions. So I was like, but why don't you guys go and ask? As we were in the heat of that argument, I, I got heated up and then I think I, I kind of went this way and he was sitting here. So I, I, I don't remember what I said, but there was like a physical, so I slept and then he literally like fisted back. So this was in the car and there's people behind us. The guys at the back just went dead. But when, when we got home, then we started arguing and then he started like hitting me. So that's, and then I was like helpless because it's, the guys are gone, it's just me and him. <laughs> so what I did was I texted my sister and said, we fought and umpetile, so I then went to my sister and we didn't talk about it. No one asked anything. So he came back, apologized, uh, the relationship went on and on. And then, then he started selling me a dream. He was like, look, I'm sorry. During this relationship, there was a lot of infidelity. Like, Rory, from maybe the first year, this girl that he had been dating for longer than me, actually called me and said, look, uh, today I want you to actually know me and know that I actually exist because I know this guy has been like playing us. I don't know. So like, that's, that's basically where the guy used to live. So I went there, found her, and I think, you yeah, know, that was like exit. So she actually wanted to prove to him that, look, you've been telling me lies and there's this girl that you're seeing. So because when I got there, she had already packed her stuff and she was leaving. With almost every fight we had, he'd break your phone. Apparently he had smashed this lady's phone. So when I got there, uh, then he, he wanted to grab the phone from her, the new phone that he had, like he had bought for her. And then he got physical with her in front of me. So then I stopped them. And, and then after that, this lady left. So because I think, I mean, in my mind, I had dedicated my life to him and I was like, I'm with you and I was faithful. So, and I had suspected and asked questions and then I, ran. I, I got so angry. I took like one of, uh, you know, those ornaments that would sit in a sitting room and then I threw it his way, but he ducked and it, it didn't hit him. There's this saying, so that's what happens in, in abusive relationships is that the person bites and then they soothe you. And then a few weeks later, he comes, 
he apologizes takes me to a restaurant once again um tells me no he's cleaned up his life and he wants me and now he's sure he wants me and this thing is going to work so he says no he's going to move to Val so then he, we move in together and then things are fine um like it was actually the probably the happiest period we've ever been and then what he did was he engaged me bought a ring and everything uh bought me a car so he got me like a polo so I was that girl who used to drive to school I can't even remember what we were fighting about and this is the one incident that it kind of shook me was that we were in the bedroom sleeping on the bed we were having a conversation uh, a mild disagreement I think but like within a split second like he was like strangling me and you know the, it's one thing that he was strangling me and like fisting on my face like but but then there was this look on his face of anger so much anger and rage so this happens early morning and then i'm supposed to go to my sister and my dad and now i have this scratches um went to my dad and my sisters papa was like in the sitting room because the scratches were i think they were on this side So I made sure when I greeted him like um almost like facing the other way so that he doesn't see them. And I didn't talk about it but my dad knows me so he knew something was up but he couldn't even ask. And at some point my dad actually told my sisters that they must not <sighs> that they must not tell me that he knows that I'm being abused. because he had said to them that if if he if i know that he knows then like i'd feel so much shame that i'd never get out you know cuz some people never get out so and and he even then said to them that if i know that they telling him then i wouldn't open up about it so they'd rather not So you, you can only imagine what a father then goes through, you know, watching their own daughter getting abused and they can't even, you know, interfere or say anything. Then I find out that he's cheating once again. Um this is when I was engaged and he there was talks of love all at the time. So when I find this out, then I was like, no, um I'm 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 out of here. So I got in, I literally like jumped into another relationship which is bad. So so um so then I get into this relationship because this guy has always known me, always loved me. Three to four months, he says no, he wants to marry me. So then I said, "Okay." His family then came for the first meeting, which was like introductions. and then and i think my dad was happy because he was like oh finally <laughs> so he's out of that so my ex because we come from the same place catches wind of this for and now i'm i've moved on and then came to me after that and then then he started selling me a dream he was like look i'm sorry uh that things turned out the way they were maybe we were not ready but now i'm ready then i go back So I break this new guy's poor's heart and I'm like we can't continue. And now my ex came back and he wants to marry me and he wants us to buy a house and have kids and whatever. Um so so then we get back together and within a short space of time I get pregnant. When I when I was 3 months pregnant He was quite a drinker so he had come back from drinking from wherever and then he comes back and says no another child is not mine sure at this point i'm like no 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 like i'm I, yeah like for me that was like what is happening your passenger seat moved so i was like my passenger seat moved it was like yeah who was in it 
If you're enjoying this episode, please tap that like button and consider subscribing. I give birth um, and then we, he comes back again, apologizes. We, well, this time around I get my own apartment because I was like, I, I don't want this thing of, like I get it in my name <laughs> because I was like, I don't want any problems of moving out because someone decides they don't want me anymore. Things were not fine. I think we we're just both pretending that we're okay. So fast forward, he, the, the last straw where I actually left the relationship was uh, because I think I was happy, he started then obsessing, you know, about the fact that I must be seeing someone. That's why I'm okay and I'm happy because I kind of like stopped fighting. So I remember this one day uh, because I had been driving his car. So he left on Monday, comes back on Friday. Then he then comes into the house and says, your passenger seat moved. So I was like, my passenger seat moved? It was like, yeah, who was in it? So this is just the level of control that was there in the relationship, that someone would look at a passenger seat and check that it moved. So it means that there was a man sitting in the passenger seat. So he, what he then did was he texted one of, because I had been talking about a colleague, and I said, no, there's this guy that I work with, blah, blah, blah. So he goes and then took my tablet, which had my Facebook, texts this guy on, on that and says, hi, I miss you, blah, blah, blah. And this guy is married, Shem. So, so then this guy calls me, because I was out with my cousins doing wine tasting. And then this guy calls me and says, no, lady, but you just texted me now and you said you miss me. So this guy was like, what's happening? So I was like, what do you mean? Then I don't know, on Facebook, you texted me. So I went on my phone and checked and saw that someone had texted him. So this is the level of psycho psychosis, I suppose, where someone, you know, gets to that point where they're obsessing and want to control that they would go to that length to control you. So then I, when I got home, um, then I asked him about this. Why, why can't you do so? Like, these are my colleagues. These are my seniors, in fact. This guy was like a manager. So I was like, this is my senior. He's married. What if the wife had seen that? You know, like, why, why are you doing that? So this is the first time I had actually bought myself a phone because I was tired of him breaking phones because he felt they were his phones. So then he took my phone that I had bought myself. <laughs> and then I asked like, I really got angry. Like I got, I got angry and I didn't have the power to do anything to him, but like I, I went into his direction. I didn't hit him or anything. Um, and then like, I think I held his arm because I didn't know what to do. Like, why are you doing this? And then at that point, he actually then, he threw like the side lamp at me at the same time, like in that, in, in that instance. So because my daughter, who was, I think at the time, not only six months, six months old, was in the other room with the help and it was at night. So then at that point, I had decided that, look, my daughter, who's a, who's a daughter, is not gonna see me getting hit by her father because like puto lena gore le rato ke go bethiwa le rato ke go bona mamalla le rato ke go bona batswadi ba ka ba elwa all the time so jaji lona lela when when that altercation and that fight happened i told myself never again this is the last time and if not for me i'm leaving for her like, uh, so the trauma that relationship caused for me was that I stopped trusting men. I had walls if I, when I got into a relationship. If someone I can't remember, I would then I would dump them. So I always make an analogy. When I got into relationships, I was always like a woman with a bag full of clothes at the door. One mistake, I was out because I was scared of opening up and, you know, letting someone into my life because that space was violated. Eight years later, only now, am I in a place where I can say I'm ready actually for like a relationship, a proper healthy relationship, because I've gone through therapy and healed 
and I've gone through, you know, coaching and healed basically. So that's, and just to emphasize for, because there's therapy even in public, you know, hospitals and clinics, there's psychologists and, you know, social workers, is that when, when one have gone through a relationship like that, it's traumatic, uh, very much so. So sometimes we underplay the trauma that it would have caused Mubupilumbagao. And that's why after this type of relationships, they don't want men. They hate men. They're like, men are trash, whatever, whatever. I don't want a man in my life. And these women just stay alone because they're scared of men. So I think one thing that I would emphasize for anyone, you know, is that Zamufola. I can comfortably say I've healed, like from that. I can comfortably say that. And, um, I've also, I mean, right now I'm a coach, so I help people actually. And this is why I say, I think God sometimes allow things to actually happen so that you can be empathetic. Because if you haven't gone through something, you judge. So because I understand why someone would stay in such a setup. So I'm able to listen and empathize and actually help them through. I currently work for a global IT company and I'm, I'm a business analyst there. So um, I believe I'm doing very well for myself considering you know everything that has happened. Um, and I actually have a foundation that is called Empowered Citizen and we've got um, a part of it focuses solely on men, which is called Men of Honor. So the reason for men of honor is to basically help, you know, men to learn about positive masculinity and explore conversations uh, around divorce, fatherhood and he men's health and stuff. So I do that because of that. And I do that because of my father, you know, because I had seen how after my mom passed away, he dipped into a depression and still in it and never really came out of it. So what I'd like to say to abused women is that one, you're worthy, you're valuable, you are loved by so many people, and people want to see you happy, progressing, and but Rada, one of the powerful things that has freed me was to actually forgive and move on. Like as, like as hard as it was, but I needed to do it for myself.